Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet everyone here. My name is Gokila Durai. I'm an assistant professor at Augusta University, and I present this paper on BIDI, that's Vault App Identification and Extraction System for iOS devices. Let's first see an introduction about what Vault applications are. The term content hiding application refers to applications that allow users to hide photos, videos, documents, and other files secretly and in a secure way on their mobile phones. Uh, common purposes of using content hiding applications is to store secretive documents, as well as for criminal users such as drug dealing, spying, trafficking, etc. Spoofing, private browsing, content hiding, secret audio recording, password managing, acting as a decoy app, private messaging, and censoring are some of the other common applications of content hiding applications. Let me first walk through the primary contributions of Vidi. This is the first in-depth exploration of content hiding applications for iOS devices. We have explored the iOS App Store and found several of those content hiding applications. The capability to do rapid identification of content hiding apps from any app store, including foreign stores such as Russia, India, and China, makes this work unique in the sense this is an exploratory analysis over several different app stores. And Vide is also a lightweight vault app identification system with high accuracy, and it uses only the textual description of applications to identify them. We built an automated vault identifier and data extraction system for content hiding apps installed on iOS devices specifically. So here is an overview of the Vide system. So Vide system has two main parts. One is the identification system and the other one is the extraction system. So the identification system consists of two subphases. Uh, the subphase number one is initial classification system, and the second subphase is secondary classification system. And in the extraction engine, basically an iOS device, when it's connected to a computer, we are able to acquire a backup of the device, and then the vault detection system runs in the background. So the vault detection system reads from the vault application DB, and then it's capable of extracting artifacts from the the mobile device which contains the evidence. And then finally, we are able to generate a report of vault artifacts. So for the initial scan to identify vault apps on iOS App Store, we basically used a, a scan set of 11 keywords, and those keywords are private, sensitive, sensor, protect, decoy, privacy, secret, hide, vault, secure, and the equivalent of those keywords in the Russian app store was identified by translating those keywords in Russian. And similarly, we were able to do it for the Chinese app store. And for Indian app store, most of the applications we found were having their descriptions and their title in English. So we didn't have the necessity to, trans to translate those keywords. So as you can see um, from this, little graphical figure here, we were able to find a lot of applications uh, using the keywords private and secure. But at the same time, keywords such as secure also yielded some secure banking applications instead of vault applications. So we had a necessity to identify vault applications in a unique way. So let's first see why content hiding applications are interesting to study. So uh, let's take an example of a searching for photo hiding application on the App Store. So you can see that several applications show up. So one of the applications um, that's listed here is called Secret Calculator and Hide Photos. So the Secret Calculator pretty much looks like a calculator. So the graphical user interface looks like a calculator. And the app icon, it comes with mostly a calculator symbol with a little lock. 
And as you can see, once we install that application, the app icon displays a different app name. It's called Calculator Plus, and nowhere the term secret calculator or hide photos, safe and lock videos, none of those things are actually showing up. And these applications are advertised uh, with a detailed description, with features, and they also have an app name uh, that is basically the app title and the app subtitle. So now let's see how uh, App Store is generally organized. So the App Store is organized into five different regions, and there are 139 countries altogether. So there are 25 different genres in the App Store organization. So the genres include business, utility, productivity, photos, videos, and there are music, etc. So there are so many different genres, including games and other stuff. But generally, vault applications were found in the categories such as utility, productivity, photos, and videos. And then further, the organization was based on um, the alphabetical list, alphabetical order, so A to Z. And then under each alphabet, basically, there are close to 16 pages, sometimes more than 16 pages. So that's how the popular applications in App Store are being um, listed when we search for those applications. So the initial identification system, uh, what we identify and obtain, that list we tend to call them as the potential vault apps or PVAs. So step one, we look into the US App Store uh, using a specific genre. And in this case, for example, the genre that we are looking at is iOS photos and videos. And we are looking to letter A, and we are also in the landing page, in one of the landing pages. And then in this landing page, we are able to identify a bunch of app IDs. So we look to the applications one by one based on those app IDs. The initial categorization is designed to quickly obtain a list of PVAs. And what we tend to obtain from the step is the app title, the subtitle, app URL, et cetera, for each app along with the app ID. Uh, so here's uh, an example of how the text looks like when we obtain it from the App Store. Um, so basically, you get to see the title, that is Secret Apps Photo Log on the App Store. And then we get to see where exactly it is found in the App Store, with which URL. And then this meta name called Description, um, it gives you the detailed description that's actually present. So, and then, um, I'm also looking at the app subtitle that is all app vault to hide and keep videos. So our interests are on the title, the description, as well as the subtitle. Now let's look into the data collection. So with respect to the data collection, once we have identified the potential vault app, now we tend to store the ID uh, that's the app ID. And then we also tend to store the name of the application, the description of the application, as well as from which URL this application was obtained. Uh, so when we say we obtain the application, we are not actually downloading the application, but we are only uh, collecting the textual information related to the application as it is advertised on the App Store. And uh, the Vault Apps database, we basically updated it periodically just to keep track of all the applications. And an interesting thing here is uh, with respect to iOS App Store, you can find that Vault applications get removed frequently. It could be for many reasons. So in general, uh, Apple says that if an application is not maintained, if, it, if an application seems to contain malware, if an application is 
uh, doing something else which is not aligned directly with the description so or if there are security concerns so those are the reasons for which an application gets removed from the app store at the same time even though these applications get removed from the app store they still continue to run on the user's device and there is no alert mechanism yet which says this application has been removed from app store but it continues to run on the user's device hence it is necessary that we keep track of all the vault applications that are there on the app store so that we don't miss any applications uh, which are current okay and uh, the initial scan is basically followed by a sequential scan using lookup url and the parse data so the way to form the lookup url is we use this specific url that is https colon slash slash uh, itunes.apple.com lookup and then the ID information, that is the app's ID information. So what we obtain is uh, a JavaScript file. And from the JavaScript file, we can actually parse the file and obtain the app's bundle ID. So why is this step important? Because the bundle identifier of any application is the only unique thing about the application which we can identify and match on the user's device. Hence, it is very important that we have this bundle identifier stored somewhere in our database. Now, moving on, um, here is a set of results of the potential vault apps that we obtained. So there were totally um, these many number of applications in our uh, US app store from the significant categories. Okay? And then out of those, we basically have 2,364 potential vault applications. And it took us 48 minutes and two seconds for uh, the initial runtime categorization. And similarly, you can see the results for the Russian app store. And more or less, the number of apps in the significant categories were of the same amount. And the number of potential vault applications were also uh, closely matching. So one reason is there were applications which were deployed in multiple app stores from the same developer. So when an application developer is trying to post an app to the app store, they can basically choose which regions and which uh, countries this app could be sold. Uh, so the number of applications that were found in US and in Russia uh, there was an overlap of about uh, 1,831 common vault applications. Okay? And the rest of the statistics is also mentioned. So applications that were found in US, Russia, India, as well as China, there were close to 1,735 applications. So these are potential vault apps. And then what we did was from this list of potential vault applications, now. The challenging part is to identify what are the true vault applications. Okay. So the ground truth was established using a manual labeling process. Uh, we split the data set among the team and all of us started labeling those applications, whether they are vault applications or non-vault applications. And we investigated every single of those uh, 2,000, uh, approximately 2,000 number of applications. and Finally, uh, we decided to use Gaussian naive pairs, a support vector machine, and decision tree classifier for further classification. And we also extended the features to uh, 20 uh, just uh, for the sake that we can minimize the false positive values. The more we define proper scan set, uh, we were able to obtain a good set of vault applications that is potential vault applications and we were able to minimize false positives like for example when we look for uh, words or terms like secure or lock there were several other applications which would show up which are not really vault applications hence we had to make our features pretty strong so we added what could be the contents of those vault applications directly into this list for example a vault application can contain 
uh, content such as photos, videos, notes, passwords, contacts. And in addition to that, they could be password protected and they can also have uh, the private uh, browser available and built inside the Vault application. So these are various features of Vault app. Hence, we started adding those into our scan set. Now, as of, and then the labeled data set, basically it contained 2,963 applications out of which uh, 1,118 apps were true Vault apps and the remaining were non-Vault applications. So to appropriately balance Vault versus non-Vault applications for our identification goals, we used all the Vault applications and about 690 of the non-Vault applications for a total of 1,808 apps for training and testing. And the data set was partitioned into 60% training set and 40% test set with random seeds. And we also used fourfold cross validation um, for each type of classifier. And here are the results of classification. Um, so as you can see, the support vector machine was yielding better scores, like better F1 scores. So it was about uh, 0.92 uh, for Vault application and 0.9 for um, on an average, the precision and recall values were also really good when we use uh, support vector machines. And we also have a summary of the cross validation scores of classifiers as well as their accuracy in several different runs. So, again, the accuracy of using support vector machines in uh, classifying the, the set of applications that we have selected into walls and non walls it was very good uh, and it was uh, 0.89. So one of the key reasons for doing this binary classification is uh, we do not want to keep manually labeling the applications of, as walls and non walls um, in order to accurately classify them and uh, keep track of all these applications in our Vault app DB. So we wanted this to be an automated process and we wanted the uh, really good trained model to take care of this labeling process. And that was the whole uh, reason of bringing in the binary classification for doing this. So finally, once uh, we had uh, trained all these class of classifiers, uh, we were able to estimate the number of Vault apps from international app stores. Uh, so basically, we were able to obtain 1,680 applications using support vector machine and about 1,272 from Russia, um, about 1,413 applications from India and 1,263 uh, Chinese application, applications from um, Chinese app stores. So here is a list of uh, the forensic analysis that we performed. And we looked at uh, close to eight applications which we downloaded, installed, uh, sometimes subscribed. And uh, we also chose different kinds of mobile applications. Um, some were password protected, some were syncing the contents to the cloud. Some were uh, using those Vault applications just to store some notes, some secret passwords. Some were trying to hide multimedia like photos and videos. And a few others were using encryption. And many weren't using encryption. And uh, the recovered artifacts from all of these uh, list of ap applications were uh, ranging from passwords to browsing history, saved notes, audio encrypted images, photos, and several other notes. So the app structure analysis was required for the completion of video automation tool. Um, and both jailbroken as well as off the shelf iOS devices, they both were used for the analysis, which was performed um, on a Linux operating system. So more or less the artifacts that we had collected from both jailbroken as well as non jailbroken devices, it was uh, the same. And um, once the VIDE runs, um, VIDE basically uses 
the Vault Apps DB to identify the list of applications. And then we also compare uh, the list of applications that are installed on the device, the app ID of those devices, sorry, the bundle ID of those uh, applications with the bundle ID of applications that is that are stored in the Vault Apps DB. And once they are able to, we are able to compare those applications. Now we know which set of applications in the mobile device are exactly Vault applications, and those are the ones that we will look into for extracting the artifacts. So once we did that, we were able to identify from the test device five out of the 70 installed applications were Vault applications, and here uh, are their names and their sources. And we are also listing the different kinds of artifacts and files that we recovered. So there is a, a tree structure into which we insert all the details and we store them. And this is the report that gets generated. So this clearly also reviews the chain of custody about who uh, the device belonged to, and then the IMEI number and uh, whether the uh, backup has completed or not. And lot of other details about the device itself in addition to the artifacts. And uh, here is a little video uh, that explains um, a little bit more about a uh, vault app identification system. All right, uh, thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. Um, you all have a wonderful rest of the day, thank you.